In this video, we're going to look at analyzing forces for objects that are on an inclined plane. So what I mean is uh, a simple example would be like a box on the ground, right? So that's everything is either on the x-axis or on the y-axis, right? So this isn't going to be a hard thing to draw and analyze. But let's say I take the ground and I tilt it, right? So this is an inclined plane now. So now my box looks like this. That's a little bit different, right? Because if I go try to treat this like normal, right? So let's say I draw a free body diagram for this. There's going to be gravity and there's going to be a normal force and there's going to be friction that's keeping it from sliding down the ramp, right? So if the box stays there, there has to be friction holding it up. If I go try to analyze this without doing anything different, I'm going to have to break my frictional force into components and I'm going to have to break my normal force into components. And that's not going to be very helpful because when you think about how this box could move, like let's say friction wasn't there, it would slide this way. But my coordinate system is still this way, right? See how my arrows in the x dimension go this way, my y's go this way. But if I'm tilted, that's not going to be helpful to solve it like this because my object isn't going to accelerate this way. It's going to accelerate down the ramp, right? So we need to change our coordinate system in order to make this work, right? And so luckily, you get to define your coordinate system, right? So in this case, your coordinate system looks like this. Here's your x, there's your y. All we're going to do is we're going to take our coordinate system for this one and we're going to tilt it so that it matches the ground, so that our x-axis is always parallel to the ground. So what I mean is our coordinate system in this case is going to look like this. So now I've tilted everything by some angle, and that angle is defined by the angle of the incline. Okay, so let me show you an example of this. Okay, so I've redrawn my box on a ramp right here. So here's my box, and here's the angle of the incline plane right here. So the force that we're going to end up having to break up for all of these is gravity. Because notice, let me draw my coordinate system now. Here's my x, here's my y. So I've tilted it from this way to this way so that now my x is along the ramp. If you notice, if I go draw my normal force, it's going to point along the y-axis now. And if I draw my frictional force, it'll point along the x-axis now. So there's no need to break them up anymore. But gravity is going to still point down, right? And so this is the one that's now at an angle in my coordinate system. So I need to break this into components. And so if you think about if my coordinate system is going this way and that way, I'm going to have a component of gravity that's pointing this way and I'll have a component of gravity pointing this way. And I'm going to leave them blank for right now until we can figure out which component there are. So to figure out which component, let's look at this angle. So this is kind of a geometry problem. If I take this angle right here, right, if I drop a line right here, see how this line is perpendicular? And this line right here is perpendicular? If you do that inside of a triangle, it makes a similar triangle. So if you notice, this angle right here is the same as that angle right there. So what that means is when we go do this, yes, you have to think about breaking up gravity, but you don't have to think about which one is sine and which one is cosine, because if you define the angle from x, you'll always end up with this side being adjacent and this side being opposite, right? If I move this down here. So this is going to be the cosine component because it's adjacent to the angle, and this is going to be the sine component because it's opposite of the angle. So now I've broken gravity into these two components, and it's going to be the same like that for no matter what it is. If it's on an incline, it's going to look like this. So mg cosine theta is always going to be your component that's perpendicular to the plane. And mg sine theta is always going to be the one that's parallel to the plane. Right? And so the way I kind of, you do this enough, you remember it. The way I remember it is the cosine one goes opposite the normal, right? So if I draw my other forces on here, I'll have a normal force and I'll have frictional force. So the way I remember is cosine is always opposite normal and sine is the one that's making it go down the ramp. So if you have something on an incline, before you can start analyzing it, you can always break up mg into these two components, right? And it'll always be cosine theta is perpendicular and sine theta is parallel. So here's two examples. Let's do real quick, right? So 
uh, start with car at rest on a hill, right? So this is a lot like the one that we just did where you had something at rest. So I'm going to draw the easy ones first. So the normal force is going to be perpendicular, right? And the frictional force is what's keeping it from rolling down. So my frictional force will point up the ramp. And then I'm going to have gravity. It would point down, but again, I'm going to break it up into my two components. So I'm going to have one component that's going into the ramp. So my perpendicular is going to be the mg cosine theta. And the one that's pulling it back is my mg sine theta. And so if you knew, let's say, the angle and the weight of the car, you could figure out what the normal force and the frictional force are because you could write an equation for this way, you could write an equation for this way and solve it. So now let's do my other one. I have a skier going down a hill that's frictionless. So again, start by drawing the forces that are all x or all y. So I know I've got a normal force, which points this way. And there's no friction, right? So here I drew a frictional force, but there's no friction here, so that's it. And so now, because it's on an incline, I could draw my gravitational force broken into its components. So there's going to be one pointing that way and one pointing that way, right? Because it would point right there. So this is going to be my perpendicular component right here. So that's mg cosine theta. And my parallel component will be right here, mg sine theta. So in this case, you can see that these forces are all canceling out. These two are the same size and those two are the same size. And that's why the car is at rest. So there's no acceleration. In this case, skier going down a hill is going to accelerate because these two forces cancel out in the y dimension. But there's nothing to cancel out this x component. So this x component, when you're thinking about, oh, there's got to be something to make that thing move, right? The reason it's moving is because this x component of gravity right here isn't canceled out by anything on the other side. That's why it rolls. So again, when you're drawing forces and you're identifying forces, it helps to draw a free body diagram because then you can figure out why things are doing what they're doing. So you may have been tempted to say, oh, there's the force of the pull or whatever making it go down. There's no force there. The reason it's going down is because this gravitational force got split into its components and there's nothing to cancel that component out. Right? So doing forces on an incline plane really easy as long as you see the incline plane and you automatically think, okay, I have to break gravity. I have to turn my XY coordinate system first, and then I have to break gravity into these two components. One that's perpendicular to the plane, that's mg cosine theta, and one that's parallel to the plane, that's mg sine theta.